26 minutes past eight, they've brought the M25 to standstill. They've glued themselves to fuel tankers. They've covered roads with fake blood, and it is all because they are demanding immediate action on climate change. But, as I'm sure you know now, new laws set out in yesterday's Queen's speech will give police a lot more power to curtail the activities of what have been called guerrilla protesters from groups like Extinction Rebellion, Insulate Britain and Just Stop Oil. Is it wrong to put limits on climate protesters? We are joined by our old friend Liam Norton. <laughs> from Liam. Insulate Britain. Now, the last time I think I saw you, Liam, on this programme, you walked out of this programme. Um, but it's good to have you back Thank in the you. chair. Uh, it's a very important issue. Broadcaster Dominique Samuels is sitting next to you this morning. Um, and, Dominique, you believe that police need to be able to tackle what you call eco-terrorism. Are you sitting next to an eco-terrorist? I am, indeed, sitting right. next to an eco-terrorist. A nice one, but an eco-terrorist all the same. So, uh, Liam's a nice one when he's sitting here in the studio, not so nice when he's sitting in front of your car or gluing himself to your train. No, uh, it's completely you normally irresponsible. Normally chat to terrorists? Uh, well, that's what you guys do, though. You terrorise people that go about their daily lives, that are trying to get people to hospital, trying to get people to school, trying to take up petrol. And, you know, I, I support the right to protest, obviously, but your right to protest does not surpass someone else's right to get vital hospital treatment, to go to work or to take their kids to school. Well, the key question is, Liam, will this change in the law when it goes through? Will it affect you and your, and your cohorts in any way, shape or form, or will you just carry on as before? I think think what I'm here today to say to the government, to Pretty Patel, is it changes nothing. Mm. And we're not in a state of protest. What we're doing here is non-violent civil resistance. And that's because of government criminality, ultimately. And um, what the situation... This is the physical reality that we're in, that Sir David King, the former chief scientific advisor, to the British government has said that what we do in the next two to three years mm. will determine the future of humanity. But I suppose, I suppose uh, if the police are going to use these extra powers, it might avoid the kind of situation that we had a, a short while ago, ended up in the court case, with the young mother who, who very gently, but nevertheless against the law, she, she nudged some protesters out of the way. Trying to take us on to school. Pardon? Trying, she was trying, trying to, take trying to, to get her kids to school because the police weren't doing anything. Um, had the police got the powers that they're going to get, then that situation probably wouldn't have arisen. And as we know, she, she had a license taken away for a year and she was fined and I think she has to do some community, community service. Can you understand that, that level of anger on, on the picket line, as it were, from members of the public? A absolutely. We can understand it. And I've spoken to Sherilyn. I met her about a month ago. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, and I've, we've been on uh, various TV interviews mm. over, over the last week. And um, she still disagrees with Vinciolate Britain's tactics, mm. but she also wasn't aware of how absolutely catastrophic the climate crisis was for well, her 11-year-old son. Well, a lot of people will son. wonder, Liam, why it is uh, her that has, has suffered the, act, the, you know, the legal action and not the protesters. So the whole point of this new law is to crack down. But you've said this won't make a difference. We, we what, would, what would stop you? Or uh, is your point nothing until someone tackles the climate crisis? Well, what we've been saying is we need a meaningful statement from the government that they're going to stop the granting of 41 new oil and gas licences. And we've been asking for a Do policy you... to insulate Britain, which, okay. as we've seen, as we've gone into an energy crisis, the policies that Insulate Britain were calling for last year are now even more sensible today. They're not, though. And we're talking and about it... reducing poverty for millions yeah. of people in the UK. And, and it's a no-brainer. I think everyone takes that point that... Homes do need insulating, and it's been a problem in Britain for several years now. And when you don't insulate homes properly, the result is, mm. is that it's obviously bad for the climate and it's also more expensive for people to heat their homes. But it's completely unrealistic to suggest that we should just completely cut off um, the way we traditionally use energy because we don't have any alternatives but, at the moment. Dominic, and what is... you will find is that people mm. will be in the cold and in the dark, specifically Dominic, older people. Just to, it play, needs to, be just to play devil's advocate for a moment, I mean, he would argue, and he'd have a point, that we wouldn't be talking about the need to insulate Britain at the level that we are if they hadn't committed the protests, the illegal protests that they've committed. It has actually put it on the agenda. It's put it on the agenda, but in a completely negative way, and it's because of the tactics 
tactics that you are indeed using. And this climate alarmism that is perpetuated by groups such as yourself isn't actually addressing the real issues. Because in my opinion, I think the government is doing too much when it comes to tackling the green agenda. It's not addressing the individual costs this will have on UK households. It's not addressing the fact that in terms of demand when it comes to the green agenda, we, we don't have the supply to match it. Mm. Over the next... Over the next 30 years, um, the green net zero will cost each household in the UK around £50,000 yeah. each. Liam, what are we doing to address that? Yeah. Dominique claims to speak for the working class and the poor. I don't claim to speak for anyone. She, she, but unfortunately, what about the millions of people in India and Pakistan that are almost... The heat levels are so bad that people are almost frying to death. OK, Liam, interesting. Well, we've got some... Well, so, so, so you we talk about climate... So you talk climate. about climate, climate let's, alarmism. Let's, okay. let's talk about the death, people though, are, because people although, are at risk of dying. Although although hundreds of thousands we have, of We actually have an expert on climate change sharply. in the studio, in because the form of our own Laura. Uh, you can tell us about global temperature rising in, 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 with reference to what he just said. Yeah, exactly. And actually, a report came out from the Met Office yesterday to say that we can, within the next five years, have a 50-50 chance of getting to one and a half degrees of warming. And that's the value we want to stay below. When the report came out in 2015, the chance of that happening was zero. And then they looked at the future scenarios that we could have. So the Earth has been warming in the last 20 years especially. We have five future scenarios that we could live in. Anything over one and a half degrees is going to see everything being more extreme. We're already going to see sea level rise, melting glaciers, more flooding. But if we continue on this middle path we are at the moment, millions more people around the world having flooding. In the UK, 1.5 million more people at the risk of coastal erosion. We're talking about India. 1.5 billion people in a heat wave. The temperatures they're having there, 50 degrees Celsius, normally happen just for a couple of weeks in the middle of summer. People have no water. They don't have energy to stay cool. It's devastated 50% of crops in some areas, which will affect food prices all around the world. And in the UK, we could, in the next 20 years, have 40 degrees Celsius. We've never reached that. And we will see similar things. We will run out of water, we will run out of energy, and it will affect our crops. So it will affect millions more people. OK. Thank um, you, Laura. Liam, you're from Insulate Britain. Have you insulated your home yet? So I've currently got a £550 energy bill that I can't pay, like many Britons yeah. around the country. And what we're saying here... The last time argument, we spoke to you, you hadn't insulated your What we're saying with this argument have you, is that have people... Have you insulated it yet? I'm, 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 what we're saying here is that people in poverty can't afford to insulate their own homes. I don't have a lot of money. I don't own a home. I've never owned a home. I've been a tenant, I've been a social mm. housing tenant, mm. and I've rented rooms have in you, London. Have you asked your uh, landlord to insulate your home? Well, it's whether I ask my landlord to, to do it or not. What we're talking about here is a mass insulation plan. Which is done the only... home by home, but have you done your own? No. I'm, I, I can't afford to, can't to afford insulate it. my yeah, own. Yeah, no, but, you, but your landlord presumably could. It's a ridiculous uh, perspective to have that it's... Like, so if somebody's in poverty and they're calling for people to not be in poverty. No, but Are you calling being... them a hypocrite because no, they're asking for poverty reduction? I'm not calling you a hypocrite reduction? at all. I'm saying, have you asked your landlord, who presumably has more resources than you, and whose responsibility it might be? Um, at the moment, I haven't asked my landlord that, that question. Okay. Why, right. not? Oh. Why, why not? Why not? Um, well, it's, it's not for me to sort of, like, demand from people... But you're um, demanding that these things... from people that are trying to get the kids to school, that are trying to get to hospitals... No, I'm not. To to work. We're you demanding are, not that the government get on with the job. Sense. We're talking about a mass insulation plan. And, and to be quite honest with you, journalists that are trying to um, regurgitate this idea of hypocrisy, as I've said, people that are in poverty, yeah. if they're calling for poverty be er to be eradicated, are they a hypocrite for saying that we shouldn't have but poverty Liam, in this country? Liam, you're prepared to sit in front of a car in order to make your point, but you're not prepared to have a conversation with your landlord. The reason you? why people are sat on the roads is because of the physical reality that we've just heard, that this isn't... And, and, and people like yeah. Dominique okay. talk about climate alarmism. There is. And, even and recently, we're in this situation even where 1.5 billion people are at risk of, even, of, of yeah. death. But you're from even, Insulate Britain, Liam. You, I mean, it's, it's a very simple point. Anyway, look, we can speak to a government minister. Minister about we this. can.